RBD Defense. Recently, I have seen a massive amount of posts from Indian accounts threatening other countries with their INS Vikrant aircraft carrier, which is interesting because you don't see Chinese accounts doing the same thing even though they just commissioned their Fujian aircraft carrier this year. This got me thinking, maybe the Vikrant is just way better than the Fujian. Well, it's time to compare the two and find out. Now, I already know what some of you will say, that the Vikrant is India's first indigenous aircraft carrier, meanwhile the Fujian is China's second indigenous aircraft carrier, so this comparison is completely unfair and that I am biased and that I watch those videos of those Chinese girls doing that one dance and that I think India is a beautiful country. Well, listen, I am only willing to deny one out of three of those allegations. You can guess which one in the comments. But to make this more fair to the INS Viki, I will also include the Shandong, which is China's first indigenously built aircraft carrier. So now it's a comparison between India's first and most advanced aircraft carrier and China's first and most advanced aircraft carrier. And by first, I of course mean first indigenously built. Let's start with the basics. The INS Viki is 45,000 tons. Wow, that must be huge, right? Well, the Fujian is 85,000 tons and the Shandong is 70,000 tons. So the INS Vikrant is kind of a baby aircraft carrier, aircraft carrier light some might say. But even a baby can be dangerous if it can command a bunch of fighter jets, correct? So let's look at the inventory. Before I begin, I would like to mention that I will only include and mention fixed winged aircraft. So no drones or helicopters because like realistically speaking, who cares? Now let's start. The INS Vikrant can carry around 30 to 35 MiG-29 Ks. The naval version of the mighty HAL Tejas was supposed to operate from the Vikrant but uh, we will get to what happened with that later. And now let's see what the Fujian and Shandong have under and on top of its deck. The Fujian is capable of carrying around 60 aircraft including the J-15 Flying Shark, J-35 5th generation stealth fighter jet and even the KJ-600 AWACS. Yes, the Fujian has its own AWACS. As for the Shandong, it can carry around 40 to 50 J-15s. Now let's talk about how effectively these aircrafts can operate from their respective carriers. How effectively an aircraft can operate from an aircraft carrier is determined by two factors. One, the launching mechanism. Two, the length of the deck. And unfortunately for India, the INS Viki is very weak in both of these categories. The Vikrant uses a stow bar launching mechanism which stands for short takeoff but arrested recovery. This means the aircraft on the Vikrant need to take off using exclusively their own engines on afterburner. The only assistance provided by the Viki is the little ramp at the end which is called a ski jump. So basically all the aircraft on the INS Viki need to take off from a really really short runway. So the aircrafts have to be very light and they have to use afterburner. This means only a few fighter jets under very specific conditions can operate from the Viki. Now I know what some of you will say, excluding the USA, most countries aircraft carriers are stowbar. So why is it only an issue for India? Remember the two factors I mentioned for how effectively an aircraft can operate from its respective carrier? One was the launching mechanism and the second was the length of the deck. The length of the deck determines how effectively fighter jets can operate from a stowbar carrier. And the deck length of the Vikrant is uh, very very short, only 262 meters. For comparison, the Shandong, which is also a stowbar aircraft carrier, has a deck length of 305 meters. And a 300 plus meter deck is what the MiG-29K would need to operate somewhat optimally. But since the Viki's deck is so short and stubby, the MiG-29Ks need to take off with a very small payload as well as reduced fuel. Because if the MiG-29K is not light enough, it cannot take off from the Viki. So the MiG-29Ks are heavily restricted by the Viki's short and stubby design. Which is a huge issue because the MiG-29K is a garbage aircraft to begin with. But how dare I call the MiG-29K garbage? 
Well, about a month or so ago, there was a massive information leak of the Indian military's records and documents. And those leaks revealed that India's MiG-29K's Zook ME PSR radar constantly malfunctions because of heating related issues. So the INS Viki has a 4th generation fighter jet, not 4.5th, 4th generation fighter jet that has to fly with reduced payload and fuel because it operates from a short stubby stowbar carrier and its radar constantly malfunctions. But why would India pick such a doo-doo aircraft for their carrier? Well, it's because the MiG-29K was their only choice. Also, they bought the MiG-29Ks thinking it would be a stopgap until the naval version of the Tejas was ready. So what happened with that? Well, a naval version of the Tejaj was shown to the Indian Navy and they said hell no! They will fly the crappy MiG-29Ks but they won't fly the naval Tejas. And who can blame them? The regular Tejas still hasn't entered large-scale production in 2025. It was supposed to start in October but it got delayed for the 500th time again to 2026 and 2027. Which surprises no one because India sent a Tejaj to the Dubai Air Show this year for static display and it was leaking oil all over the place. They even put a gift bag under it to catch the oil. Who wants Tejaj juice for their birthday? Get in contact with the Indian Air Force. Anyway, going back to the main point, considering the regular version of the Tejaj is in such a sorry state, the aircraft carrier version is not going to be ready anytime soon. So the Indian Navy is stuck with their doo-doo MiG-29Ks. So now that we know the effectiveness of the INS Viki and its aircraft, let's take a look at the Shandong and the Fujian for comparison. As the Shandong is also a stowbar carrier just like the INS Viki, it can only operate fighter jets for its fixed-winged aircraft. But unlike the INS Viki, it has a full-size flight deck so its aircraft, the J-15 Flying Shark, a 4.5th generation flanker with an ISI radar, has no issue operating from the Shandong. Now the Fujian. Unlike the Viki and the Shandong, the Fujian uses electromagnetic catapults to launch its aircraft. What this means is that the aircraft on the Fujian uh, lock their landing gear with a latch on the deck and this latch is connected to a catapult system under the deck when activated, this catapult shoots out at super high speeds like a gun firing a bullet and this momentum is what launches the aircraft into the air. So since the aircraft carrier itself is launching the aircraft into the air, there is no strict weight or engine power limitations. This allows the Fujian to launch large turboprop aircrafts like the KJ-600 AWACS off of its deck. And of course, as the Fujian has no issue launching an AWACS off of its deck, it has no issues with fully loaded, maxed out maximum weight fighter jets. It can launch them, no issue. For the fighter jets, the Fujian also has the J-15 Flying Shark, but they also have the J-35 5th generation stealth aircraft. An AWACS, a stealth aircraft and a flanker operating from the same aircraft. That is nuts! Thank you for watching the video till the end. We're getting close to 4000 subscribers, so subscribe to the channel. Uh, I will make more international style videos like this where I compare just or talk about just like more Chinese, Turkish and like other stuff. Either way, thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment and I will see you in the next video.